In my hands is the Peachy Printer, the world's first $100 3D printer. With practically unlimited build volume, extremely high resolution, and a new inexpensive resin, it's by far the world's smallest 3D printer, making it truly lightweight and portable. And on top of all that, when combined with the camera, it will be a 3D scanner too. You might be wondering, how can I possibly offer you a 3D printer that does all that for only $100? Unlike most other low-cost 3D printers, I didn't focus on using cheaper parts within the same design. Instead, I reinvented how the 3D printer works, using completely new methods that don't require the same expensive parts. I built my own galvanometers using a simple coil of wire and a magnet. A tensioned thread replaces the need for shafts, bearings, and springs. I wrote a script in Blender 3D that causes the sound card in your computer to drive the home-built galvanometers via your headphone jack, eliminating the need for an external microcontroller and a digital-to-analog converter. This turns out to be extremely accurate, as most sound cards are 16-bit, meaning the signal going to the printer has a resolution of over 4 gigapixels. The resin floats on top of salt water. So I created a drip system that feeds salt water into the print container, causing the resin floating on top of it to rise. This replaces the need for a rigid frame, stepper motors, and the electronics to drive them. I then needed to detect the level of the resin, so I created a switch by placing two metal contacts in the way of the drip feed. I wrote some code that detects the connection made when a drip hits the two contacts via the microphone jack in my laptop. Even in a small container, it takes over a thousand drips to rise the level an inch. And that gives this printer a Z resolution that is easily less than one one thousandth of an inch. The unique approach that I took to designing the Peachy allowed me to replace all of these expensive bulky parts with things that I had just laying around the house. Literally, the first version of the Peachy printer was created entirely using household items. Without spending a single penny, I had a working 3D printer on my desk. Although it didn't work very well. My homemade printer was a long ways away from being a saleable product. Over the next nine months, I spent countless hours and $10,000 redesigning my printer. I kept using higher and higher quality parts and redeveloping the printer over and over and now it's almost ready. So why crowdsource funding? The Peachy printer is already quite functional, but the Blender script that runs it still needs quite a bit of improvement. We also need to make high volume orders of our parts to bring this printer into production. Unfortunately, we don't have the funds to do this alone. I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone at my local hackerspace, Saskatoon Techworks, my brother Nathan Grayston, and my investor David Bowe. None of this would be possible without you guys. And lastly, thank you funders. Your contribution is exactly what I need to make the Peachy Printer a reality.